a knit along right now in the group that has a couple of lace sections and several people in the group have asked about lifelines and do they need to use a lifeline? How do they put one in? What is the point of a lifeline and so forth? So what follows is um, I'm going to show you how to install a lifeline and the purpose of that is if you make a mistake in a, in a section of your knitting, you, you'd like to be able to tear it back or frog it back to a point at which you've installed a piece of waste yarn or dental floss or you know something that will hold your stitches so that if you end up having to, to, to rip back to that point, you know what row that is. And then you can resume knitting knowing that everything from that point is correct. All right, let me show you how that works. All right, I'm working on this section of lace and I've decided to put in a lifeline about halfway through the chart so that if I make a mistake, I know that my stitches are correct and I'm safe back to this point. So even if I make a mistake in the next few rows, I could just tear it out and know that the lifeline will save me here where the cable is. So basically, all we're gonna do is take a length of dental floss and put it where the cable is now. And so many circular needles have a little, you know, how you have the little metal straight thing that you use for a key, and that's where you tighten and untighten your needles when you attach a new cable. But this little hole that's right there, I don't know if there's too much glare or you can see that, that little hole right there also can be used for a lifeline. So you can thread dental floss in there and then carry it along and it'll lay right down next to the cable. So let's... I'll show you how that's going to work. I'm choosing to put in a lifeline uh, when I'm on a purl, a wrong side row that I'm most of the time just purling. Like I'm not just, I'm not going to try to do a lifeline when I'm knitting a right side row or where I'm performing most of the lace stitches. So what I'm going to want to do is take some the dental floss that'll be on the working needle, and I'm going to just take the end of it, just generic dental floss here. And I'm not sure, I mean, you can pull off a length of it right away if you want to, or you can just spool it off as you go. All right, so I have that threaded in there. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just pull off a length and, and I'm just gonna follow my wrong side row instructions here and go ahead and do it exactly as I normally would. Um, and I'll show you what happens here as we go along, how that's gonna look. You can see now that I have a few stitches on here that this, since I've threaded the floss through that hole, it's just gonna pull it through and the floss is just gonna lay right next to the cable. Now, the only thing I wanna point out about that is if you have a stitch marker involved, then this method isn't going to work because what'll happen is if you have a stitch marker here and you carry on like this, your stitch marker is gonna end up trapped on the row where your floss is and it'll be stuck there. It won't be able to move along up and up and up as you continue knitting up the rows. So if you're using stitch markers, then there's a different way to go about installing a lifeline that I'll show you in just a moment. And the other reason you may wanna use a different method is if you want your lifeline to be a thicker gauge uh, thread or yarn, you know, thicker than dental floss. Um, dental floss is, you know, I mean, it'll function, it'll serve its purpose, but it's kind of flimsy and small. Um, but it's really the only diameter of thing that would fit through the little hole down here on the base of the needle right there. I've gotten to the end of my row here now and I'm ready to pull my floss through. Okay, so I've got my floss all the way pulled through and I've, I've added quite a bit extra there. All right, now that we have the lifeline installed, I'm going back and I'm knitting the next row. And you just wanna make sure that you're not knitting the lifeline. You wanna make sure that you're doing your pattern, you know, over, like for example, if I'm knitting this next stitch, I'm gonna do this next stitch, but I'm gonna be careful not to pick up the lifeline. Like don't let it become part of your next stitch. It needs to stay on the row that it's on. And then the only thing I don't care for about dental floss, and maybe it's just because what I have is waxed, is that it's it's it, nothing slides very well. Like I've got a little problem back here because it's all bunched up now. It didn't slide. It's very grabby on the needles and on the cable because it's waxed. Um, so I think, you know, like a, another smaller, uh, smooth, maybe embroidery thread or some kind of floss, embroidery floss maybe, um, would be better than waxed dental floss that I'm trying to use here. But 
I just wanted you to see how to put it in more than anything. And now I'll show you how to install a lifeline if you're using stitch markers or if you don't care for dental floss. All right, I'm gonna put in a lifeline that's just some contrasting sport weight yarn that I'm going to just, I've just put it on a darning needle here and I have uh, measured off, you know, more than the width of my knitting. So I have plenty to, to hang out each side. Um, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna thread this underneath the stitches. I'm not taking anything off and this needle might be a little too big, but I'm just gonna thread these underneath here leaving the stitches on the needle. So I'm just gonna do maybe five or six at a time and, and draw some through. And I'm gonna go all the way across like this so that I'm just in, I'm just putting in this lifeline underneath the existing stitches. Now this might actually be a little e easier if the needle wasn't on there. If I'm just, yeah, it's way easier to just do it, you know, under the cable like that. So you can see what I'm doing there. All right, now when I get up to that stitch marker, I want to go, it's important to know that you go around the stitch marker. You don't wanna put your lifeline through the stitch marker um, because you want the stitch marker to be able to come free and travel up the rows with your needles. So when you get to the stitch marker, just make sure to go around it rather than through it. So that way it will come off when you knit past it. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna go all along this whole entire thing. Now, it's it might be easier for you to do this. Um, I'm doing it with the right side facing me because I've just finished a purl row. Um, I just finished purling my way back across here so that I know that I don't have any yarn overs to try to, to deal with, that everything is gonna be a regular knit stitch, that I don't have any yarn overs to try to mitigate with my darning needle here. Um, and I, I just did that because I thought it would be easier than trying to, to put this through after a right side row and holding it on the wrong side with, you know, potentially with yarn overs to have to deal with, with the darning needle. It may not have made any difference at all. I just chose to do it this way. You can see the lifeline that I've put in now and I'm ready to go back and knit the next row on the right side. One thing I'm going to do too is make a note either on a, you know, on the margin of the pattern or on a post-it note on the pattern um, which row I installed the lifeline in so that if I ever had to rip back or frog back to this point, I would know which row to begin with when I resumed knitting. All right then, you can see the lifeline that I put in and should I make a mistake or have something go awry, and I needed to actually, you know, take the, remove the needle and start ripping out all these stitches, then I would have this as my stopper, so, so to speak, or my lifeline, and I would know what row that is because I wrote it down. Now, if I wanted to put in another lifeline, say in this next row, I could do that, then I could take this one out and have it, you know, five rows up and just keep alternating like that. So I'm going up and up and up. Now, some people just leave them in until they're all done with their work. Um, if I use lifelines at all, I usually just alternate the two. Okay, so that's lifelines, and if you don't feel like you need a lifeline, then may the knitting gods be with you. Go forth, do good work, make perfect stitches, and for the rest of us, we'll use lifelines as needed, um, and hopefully you understand now how to, how to use them and how they're beneficial. So if you found this video to be helpful, click down there, click like and subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications so that you know when a new video comes out, you'll be notified. All right. Let me know, as always, if you have any questions. Take care.